So some of the conclusions that we can draw from here uh, uh, is uh, to, to a great extent the, the idea of a sperber uh, crystal of a control group being held together by a constant flow of information and regardless of the content of the information uh, will hold uh, and this could have important implications that we already know I think in terms of, for instance of cultural uh, diplomacy what to do if you have conf conflicts between several zones or, or several cultures what you can do or you cannot do in terms of making them mix or not or the same thing about different ethnic groups in the same city, in the same space what are the things that they are going to make them if, if they do come to a, a cultural um, common ground uh, it's only communication an increase of, of, of communication the same thing about cultural mergers and separations of different groups in, in this time of, of migrations uh, about culture we like to make a separation be between the process, the constant flow of information and the content or the objects resulting in a specific moment in a specific place from that uh, flow of information for uh, from that is, uh, those exchanges. So uh, somehow uh, we can talk of um, cycles of cultural content. So for instance, uh, we can have Canadian culture in 2000 years, uh, but probably the same things that we identify today as typical of Canadian culture will not be the same. There will be traces of those in the new messages, in the new objects. Uh, but probably not the same. It's also important in terms of, of the world we are living today with, with all these virtual worlds that communities, as many sociologists have already pointed out, will form. And these communities will create and create their cultural areas uh, because it's communication that will make them possible. And so far, most of the communication took, took play, had taken place in human history in the same place, through human interaction. That's not the case uh, uh, anymore. And again, things that people uh, analyzing the internet and many other forms of communication, like Harold McInnes, uh, uh, have pointed out about different kinds of communication and technology will create different content uh, or different types of, of culture in that, in that regard. Uh, we have also already talked about cycles of cultural content. And the, the other thing that we saw at the beginning, we had a single world. So uh, that world didn't have uh, any interaction with the exterior because there were there were no exterior uh, for them. Is that after the, the, the cultural area coalesces uh, into a into a region, it gets formed. The only way to to get new information into the system was through the old messages of the repositories of information. Why? Because in the preferences we established for this this kind of libraries or whatever you want to call them, we decided that the library. When, when it would um, get to the limit uh, in terms of memory would get rid of the middle messages in terms of uh, temporal history so they, they would keep the newest messages or books or whatever they have received and the oldest okay so when after uh, several runs of, of, of the of simulations an agent goes to the library encounters a library and gets a message the message that he will receive that there is no, no message like that in the world anymore, <coughs> because the message has completely the, the world has completely changed through all the interactions. So that I think that's an interesting uh, point because uh, at least in my mind we always think as uh, of libraries and repositories of cultural information as some kind of museums or cemeteries in which uh, all information goes to get stored. But under certain circumstances, uh, of course, if people go there and get any kind of change, can become. Uh, sort of forces of, of novelty or, or, or innovation uh, in, that, in those kinds of, of, of world. Work ahead. Oof. Well, <laughs> keep developing the, the, the model, of course. Uh, by adding, I think, this is the, mo the most important thing, different games of culture. So you have something closer or more similar to, to the phenomenon you are trying to, to, to model. Analyzing and measuring cultural areas would be nice, and how we're going to do that, I don't know, but we'll try. I think at some point we'll, we'll have to, to try to get into some kind of more powerful computing by going to things. Uh, NetLog is very flexible and very easy to use, uh, even some of us have been able to, to learn. Uh, and you can run very simple experience very fast, so that's, that's why it's very useful. But translating those models and the simulator to a more powerful uh, language of, of programming 
I think could be interesting. And also using capabilities like the high computing uh, network uh, could be interesting in terms of the, of the, of the power of, of the simulation. Check the model against the specific data sets. As we are famous in the humanities, we don't have data sets, we don't work with data sets, we don't know what the, those are, but the first thing that people in the science ask you about is have you checked this again against any real thing that sets? And I had to say no. Okay, but we are trying to at least in, in, in a limited form create a data sets in the world about cultural objects so that we can try to determine how they move around. Maybe not specifically to, to address these models that we have worked with, but uh, some kind of, of cultural transmission. And I think it would be very important at some point uh, to add some kind of semantic and, uh, and cognitive layer to the agents uh, and different forms of relating to, to information, not only the, the kind of game that, that we design uh, here. And I think that this is all. Thanks to all of you and the money providers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.